indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Some of you may not know who Citizens for Change is, and I'd like to let you know. Citizens for Change, we feel that change is essential for improvement. We are grassroots, community based, nonpartisan property rights organization. Our motto is any question deserves an honest answer. Sometimes that's hard to get. <clears throat> Our mission <laughs> is to encourage and promote Buncombe County government to fully represent the people under the constitutions of North Carolina and the United States. Our vision is that major decisions made by governmental officials in Buncombe County will reflect the priority needs, wants, wishes, and concerns of the citizens. Our values, core beliefs about right and wrong, do what is right, we have a website, an email address, a phone, and our special quote, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has, Margaret Mead. That's my favorite quote. Well, we have, still have Senator Queen, but let's take a few quick questions for Joe and Holly. Well, I've got a question for both of them. i, I got a question for both of them. <laughs> And, and appreciate you being up here so I can get your answers on, on, on camera. And stand beside y'all look pretty good together. I mean, all those difference in the height, I can still get you the same shot. She used to sit on this side of me in four years, so maybe she used to be over here on this side. <laughs> <laughs> that puts you on the left, Joe. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Nathan made a comment which I think is very valid. And he said the debate's needed. So since we have a Democrat and Republican here, uh, and I'm asking this question as a citizen because everybody knows I love a good fight. Uh, why can't we get more debates in our political running? I want to see the Democrats and Republicans sit down in a debate, not organized questions where the League of Women Voters has gone through and sorted out those hard questions. I want a good debate. And, and, and would you two push to have that done if you survive through the primaries? I'm, I'm wide open to any form that will help the public be able to discern what they need to understand about policies and uh, perspectives. I don't, because I, I mean, I, tr truthfully, I hadn't really thought about it before like you just mentioned it. And, but it's uh, true, Holly. I we do. I think you're actually probably right. I, 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 so I don't know how to push it except to be to be absolutely willing to participate. You know, I'll, you know, I'll be there. Well, I tell you how we can push it. <laughs> but, it. It can come out of this group right here. We can we can arrange it if the candidates right. will come. You know, right. sometimes we try I to. Think they would. Uh, well, no, we did. No, we try to. Well, can I say something? Sure. Every one of won't come to nothing. Every one of those forms that we've been on involved with have been the softball questions. Yeah. Same question over and over and over. I could even stand up there and when we were running against each other, I could have said her campaign speech, she could have said mine. <laughs> I mean, it, and, it, and it's the same question over and over. And I do believe League of Women Voters and these these other commission issues we'll probably be getting into if we both win the primary. I think we ought to be able to be asked a question and then answer it and then if someone says something down the road that you don't agree with or you need to you need to follow up with it and create some debate because i really these these national debates no matter what side of the fence you're on at least you get a better feel for those people and you hear their give them honestly you're talking about their records or what they want so i, I think it's as a matter of fact when i ran for mayor i asked the legal women voters to let us debate and they said that we're not going to do that so. Well, we'll put that word out. I'll put that word out on TV that you all would like to do that because I, I think if we the people do demand it, and Nathan's right, a debate will provide better solutions because guess what? We could all be wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we got Paul and then Mark. Okay. Um, and Gerald. If you sort of like, um, I'm going to throw a catamaran on the pigeon with this question. Holly, if you become Buncombe County Commissioner, even though I will not be voting for you, I wish you all the luck. Thank you. Uh, in, one of the problems that we have in Buncombe, and, and Dr. Joe, you can answer this too, is uh, an issue about forced sanitation. And of course, Axel, uh, you are 
as a member of Oshawa County Council, or two counties. She seems to be quite eager to get every square <coughs> of the Buncombe County they can so they can take our taxes and double our taxes. If you are fortunate enough to become a county commissioner, how are you going to address the issue of people in the county that do not want to be forced either into Oxford, Black Mountain, or any of these other areas? How does that square with your <coughs> policy now of, of uh, helping Oxford move forward? First of all, I would I understand the perception is out there that, that Asheville wants to gobble everybody up, but I, I have a different perspective on it. But So I just want to kind of politely say that's, that's not my perspective. I think if we look at the statistics about Asheville compared to any other municipality, it's, we've actually been very, very conservative almost in any indicator if you look at other cities in, in North Carolina. But we'll just, you know, we'll just agree to disagree. And you know what? Perception is reality. Right? I mean, it doesn't, if that's your perception, that's, that's, that's where mm -hmm. you're coming from. But, but here's where I'm going to answer your question. Did you think I wasn't going to? <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I would do, because here's, here's the problem. It, it, it makes all, nobody likes the involuntary annexation. But truthfully, <clears throat> Senator Kempwee, um, we, Asheville, does not have any of the rights that any other municipality in North Carolina or Buncombe County has. That's the only way that we can grow. Every other city, and I've talked to all the city managers in Buncombe County, just out of curiosity, like how, how do you do this annexation thing? And they have the ability to, to talk with developers and say, when you're developing, let us work together on how to run the water lines, and, and when, you, when your develop is done, you know, and we've worked with you and we've got... infrastructure, then you can come on in and volunteer. So then the people buying in know on the front end and don't get got. We cannot do that. Thanks. I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of picking on you just a little bit. But we've been, <laughs> um, it's Sullivan, a Sullivan Act 3, that we are not able to do that as a city. So, so my, my if, if I, and I, and I actually believe that if we had that ability, that a lot of the, the painful involuntary annexation and although Joe never voted for it one, he knows that none of us liked it. I mean, none of us go home. With it. God, I mean, that, I mean that, it's a hard, it's a hard thing. I mean, we, I understand it's very, yeah, it's very can difficult. I, can I just qualify that just a little bit? Sure. Forced annexation, to me, as a new citizen, as a new American, is very un-American. If the people don't have the right to at least vote whether they want to be annexed or I, not. I totally understand that perspective. Actually, at the moment, I think about what, 25 years ago, had a population of about 60,000, 15 square miles. Now it's up to what, 60 or 70 square miles, and I have a population of 75,000. The further you go out to <coughs> chase the tax base, the lower your density goes because of, of uh, working that lower density ends up in higher taxes and so forth to accommodate that. So I'm trying to figure out, but I'm, I'm still trying to get to, if mm -hmm. you are Buncombe County <coughs> right. Commissioner, you are going to be asked by the people of, of Buncombe County who will turn around and say to you, we have no intention to be an annex. At least we want the, the right to vote for that. How are you going to approach that? Uh, I, am, I'll, be very, I'll be very honest with you. I will support a municipality, so it's not just Asheville, it would be Woodfin, Weaverville, uh, Black Mountain, uh, I guess Biltmore Forest, but I don't know what we want. This is kind of a, a unique thing. Um, I will support their legal right to, to grow under the law. So I, I, 
will not intervene in that, and I will support what they are, are given the, by the General Assembly to be able to do. Does that answer Can your I question? Can I say something? Okay. Uh, I don't want you just to feel like you're getting picked on, but I, I've got to say this about annexation. The reason why I voted against it was because the first year I was on city council, I asked Jim Westbrook, the city manager, why are you picking half of this neighborhood and half of this and half of that? And he told me it's because if we annex a big chunk of people, they'll all vote to cancel out the next year. That's why they don't annex. As Holly's right, they've been chipping away at it. But if I'd sit there for four years and say this criteria would have fit this neighborhood last year, why is it just now coming up? So that, that was the first thing that got me upset about annexation. Uh, the second question that we always used to hear my good friend Jan Davis said this a lot, that the people living in Buncombe County benefit from living in the city. And uh, because they use city infrastructure and roads, they should be paying part of the bill. My issue was, well, if you take money out of the county, if they, if they come in and spend money in the city to begin with. You take money out of their pocket and out of business pocket, it really helps Asheville to have a vibrant economy around it, not having taxes taken out of it. <coughs> Now, I would have voted for annexation because I felt like, and this woman, she, I don't think she liked doing a lot of it, but she did it. And I didn't do all of it. No, you, there were some you voted against, but that's right. Uh, but I, I think that part of the issue for me was if the city is going to do it, if the city can do the right job, then I'd have to vote for it. Because that's why I was elected by the people to secure the, the like Holly said, to keep Asheville growing. But when you're 40 police officers short, when, you, when it takes you every 40 years to pay the street, and these are statistics I remember even when I'm getting older, I always need a card. But anyway, that's why I couldn't raise my hand. Because I did not see the city of Asheville performing the things it said it would do. Everything the council, and we were on council together, and now that you're on council, the city loves to study this stuff, and they love to get all this on paper. But they don't have the ability to back it up and enforce what they do. That's why I voted against it. If, I, if that had all been in place, if we had enough police officers, paving was on time, people were, I would have voted for it. But yeah. I couldn't. That's my yeah. Additions for Holly, okay. I believe I heard you say there a while ago that uh, you was for these people that could not afford a house. Is that right? I'm, I'm very You're trying supportive. to find them a good place to live. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Well, okay, now I, mean, I have you say that, but what are you going to do about these people that's got these trailers and these houses that they rent? I've not heard you say nothing about that yet. What, I mean, I don't understand what it means. If I've got a house and rent it yeah. to you, right? are you supposed to take care of my house or are you supposed to turn on the I see what you're saying. So you're talking about like the tenants. Rental that, property. That the people that don't take care of. That's exactly right, yeah. ma'am. Exactly I mean, right. I, I I would support. I, I'm I'm not sure what all the. I would have to learn first of all, like what are the areas that we would have if, if I'm on commission that we would have say over, and I I I that's one of those things I don't know the answer to. But I absolutely. I mean, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't help if I care about people being able to find affordable with many rentals. And let's just say a lot of good landlords say, okay, I'll, I'll do my part, I'll do my part. And then a year after, their place is all torn up. And, and they've had bad experiences with illegal substances or animals or whatever it is. You think those people are going to help the following year? I've lost, I've lost my credibility. So I do believe that whatever, I, I would be supportive of trying to help, you know, landlords have some some rights around that. I just don't know what the forum is. To be honest with you, I don't know if that's the state thing. I don't know if it's a county commission thing. But I'd be glad to, to check into it for you. Well, but my, my answer is within the within the realm of the county commissions, what's as possible. I would be happy to be uh, supportive of um, of landlords' rights because that it's a two way street. Well, it seemed to me like that you knew something about the renters there just a while ago. You know what a judge told me in one of the small claims court I've been asked? He said, Marvin, I'd give them $50 just to get them out of my truck. Mm -hmm. Would you yeah. be willing to do that or would you yeah. be willing to put them in jail for a day for every dollar they owe you? No, I'm, I'm not serious. Yeah, I just got on selling two trailer parts. I just got on selling two. You know, defense, Molly, I, I don't think that's a fair question because I think I, I, I have property too. And I had people trash it. That, that's between the renter 
and the owner of the property. As I, if I'm on county commissioners, I'm not going to start telling people that on the trailer park what you got to do with all your stuff. There are, they do do it. There are, there are codes and there are enforcements. They're, they're, they have right. the sheriff's department. But I, I don't know how I, as any county commissioner or city council, could say, if you trash it, you got to pay him. I'm, you can't get it. I think we got enough government regulations as it is. We sure don't need any more of them. Yeah. Personally. That's, and, and, I, and I'm on your side. I had, a, I had a brand new house trashed by a drug dealer about two years ago, $2,000, $3,000. I had to pay for it. David Gant told me sitting right in the commissioner's office in Asheville, he said, Marvin, I've got rental property. I know this is exactly what you're going through with. It's tough. And Sometimes not one time tough. did he say, we'll go get them and put them in jail for a day for every dollar they owe you, not one time. Well, that, I think they oh, the legal system needs to work out. That's the legal system. We've got, we've got two more questions, and then we need to go. Thank you, Three, okay. I just want to uh, throw something out with both of you, our new candidates, you know, for the mm -hmm. county commissioners. I hear a lot of go to the meetings and the city council meetings and the county commissioner meetings, you talk about regulations to, stop, to save our slopes, to protect, to stop the urban sprawl and all of that. Why can't you learn from some of these backward states like Mississippi and Arkansas and some of the others? They, they learned how to do it years ago. They don't tax undeveloped land. Then the people don't have to sell the land off to pay their taxes so they don't have that, the property is not available. To the, to the developers and it's not as lucrative for them. I got a real problem with buffers. You know, if you're going to take 30 feet, whatever Hollywood, 50 feet, 20, whatever the state and the county or city agree to, if you're going, if you can't let them use that property, then you shouldn't tax them for it. That's right. Well, you shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, I, if you can't use it, why should you have to pay the tax and let the, let the city or county or mm -hmm. government eat, eat that up? Uh, well, but, what we're doing with this, we're forcing all of these family farms and family properties, you're forcing them out of existence because <coughs> over time, they build these other things around every time something builds, their taxes go up. they got to sell another piece of land well, to pay their tax bill. These revals are out of, they're out of their place. But if the you don't just simply, you, it doesn't cost you anything to maintain the, you're, you're not doing anything, you're not putting any roads on it, you don't have any sewer lines on it, you know. Talk to the legislature. That's, I, that's I know, but I'm just saying this is something that you should be talking and to the I legislature think, I mean, about. I don't know specifically about you know Mississippi and Arkansas, but I think uh, they're, I, they're, they're about there are 27 states that don't tax on tax uh, undeveloped land. That's interesting. I mean, I didn't know. So. I just named those two because those are thought of as the two most <laughs> backward states in the country. Oh, okay. I'm right again. I don't, oh, I don't know about any of the 27, <laughs> but I think that's. But I mean, I think the message here is I'm not sure if that's the right approach or. Not. It might be the best one, but I guess what I want to say is that I would like to have a serious conversation, and it would be, uh, it, it would definitely be with our uh, our legislative delegation because we're not going to be able to do it without their agreement and try to figure out how can we, you know, stop the madness of the farms being redeveloped. I'm, I totally agree with you. I don't have the answers, but and I would like to see it more from a, a carrot than, the, than <coughs> a stick point of view. So if that's that's something that I'd be wide open to research. When you're looking at the other states, you might look and notice that 45 mm -hmm. of the other states in the country don't have forced annexation. Yeah. We're one of the five that allow it. Ron. Well, you know, one other thing I'll say is <coughs> South Carolina has a homestead exemption. If you have a, I think it's $50,000 after you've lived there, if you're, at, you're 65 or older, mm -hmm. after you've lived there, they cut $50,000 off the top. Our legislature, in all respect to you, Senator, that, they make it real tough on cities yeah, and I, counties to do anything. Well, that's a, win, that's a winning issue, Joe. They I want to control us so much Absolutely. that we cannot do anything without their approval. And I think that's wrong. I well, think that they need to give out. us a little. Well, you say one thing about that. I brought up the hotel room tax five years ago. I do believe, until they do that, the city center will never be fixed without a funding source. We asked the legislature, I went down there, I think Holly went and, and uh, I can't remember who else, this was back five or six years ago, and Martin Nesbitt sat there and tapped me right on me like this, right on my lapel and says, I'm not going to raise the room tax because I gave my word. And I said, who'd you give it to, the hotel industry? That's right. Oh. we got a problem, and I tell you, I think if I'm on county commissioner, and the, if the city council would get their act together and the county commissioners get their act together, sit in the room and bring the press in and tell the legislature we want a room tax and here's why. It'd be honest to be on them to 
give us what we need. We're not playing hardball with our legislature. They're, hey, they're just messing Joe, with the rest of people. There, there's a way to do that too, and Holly, there's a way to do that. What the legislature's ought to do, and it's a winning issue, if they would offer a menu of options for the counties to pick uh -uh. from we and put that in there. Them the menu. They don't well, give I us agree. If, uh, it needs to be us if one menu. member of the Buncombe County County Commissioners can go to Raleigh and lobby and stop a bill that's in the legislature to allow district elections in Buncombe County, then, then they can go one can go down there and lobby for something instead of against it. Yep. That's my point. Okay. <laughs> My name is Ron Sorcy, and we appreciate you guys being here tonight, Stand taking up. time out to come talk with us. I have, to, <clears throat> excuse me, I have two county commissioner. Uh, would you support district elections, yes or no? No, not yeah. until I know more about it. I don't. I mean, this is kind of the most I've ever had. But if you wanted yes or no, I'm just going to tell you where. Okay, I'm would you about. support the concept of district elections from what you know now? From what I know now. That each, each school district would have a representative. I, I just feel like I need to I need to understand more of, of both of both okay. sides of it. So, <laughs> so if you're if you're I mean what what I want y'all to all know about me is that I'm gonna give you an, I'm gonna give you an answer. Right. So if the option tonight is yes or no, I'm gonna say no. Okay. But yeah. I will look. I mean I will be glad to kind of study the issue and then come to you know maybe a different conclusion. Maybe I'll reform my thing like so. Sure. Answer to both is yes, yes. Like I said, uh, when, I, when I went to Nashville, you might not be here, but again, I want to say this to you all can hear it over time. When we went to Nashville, Tennessee, I talked to the city council, and I was talking to them. I was in Arizona three weeks ago with my wife sitting out on the porch tavern in Margarita. I don't know if you said that, but anyway. So here in Buncombe County. Can I add one more thing? Um, once again, not to change my answer. However, I was wide open to looking at district elections in the city. I, the way I would think that the, this is part of the reason why I said no tonight because of the format that's been uh, presented, that I think perhaps a way to look at it is if you did have districts and at large. I do think, I think that's a healthier model if you combine them. It's just one, it's just my opinion, but I mean other cities do that. I think like, um, uh, and I think that's the way that the, we, we use the school system, and the school system has at large. When you, you know, have at large, you've got to, you'll have two commissioners from one district. It doesn't cut down on the cost. We want better representation and.